Yeah, and then then click play. Okay, we should Please start because we're already. Yeah, we're a little. Yeah. I'll try and be sure. Okay. Ooh, my polo thing. I'll fix it. Oh, you I got done? the code. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was just gonna control. You can do it. Yeah, that's that's true. Uh, yeah. But. Yeah, let's just begin and okay. not take a lot of time. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Okay, guys. Now we're going to start the lecture for this week. Um, and I just want to kind of quickly go through the slides because today we have a lot to cover and I just um, want to get through them pretty fast. Um, one thing I do want to mention before I get started on lecture content is um, Giving Day. So basically, um, Giving Day is a day um, that basically allows private teams to um, get money, um, not only from just like your friends, families, and um, whatnot, but also from the school. And so this um, donation um, event starts tonight at midnight, and we're trying to reach our um, goal donation, which donors, not donations, um, so we're trying to reach 57 donors in order to get um, money from Cornell. Like they'll donate a thousand dollars if we reach 57 donors within um, like the fastest. So if you guys like, you know, like the training course, you know, like our apps, you know, like Eatery, and you kind of want, and if you want to support us and you know see us do bigger and better things, like definitely like please consider um, just donating five dollars today at midnight. Like if you just have five minutes to spare at midnight, because um, it would really help us, you know, um, get funding for our team and just do more cool things and exciting things. So link is on the slides. Obviously, we'll post slides after our lecture. So if you guys just um, want to donate, um, that would be great. Uh, so now I'm going to quickly go over uh, what we went over last week, which was um, delegation and moving through different views. Um, so this is the access code. Uh, I don't believe the web app is working, so you probably want to access this through your phone. Um, so if you search up Polo, P-O-L-L-O, -O, um, that um, on the App Store, you can like download the app there. Uh, the, yeah, the web app is going to get updated pretty soon, but right now it's um, in maintenance. The web app doesn't work, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully it works. If not, you know, we can just do this old fashioned way. Okay, well, yeah, let's just, okay, you know what? Forget about this. Let's, you know, let's just talk it out. Um, okay, so first question, guys. You know, what is the difference between presenting a view controller modally and pushing a view controller via a navigation controller? Okay, so the first thing is, right, is, you know, a modal presents a view controller directly on top of the current view control, and navigation controller pushes view controller onto the stack. So what do you guys think about A? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's correct. Um, so that's kind of how modals... The difference between modal and navigation control is that modal is like directly on your screen. Um, navigation controller with a navigation control, when you do push view controller, that like takes you to a different like view controller. Um, for B, um, so modal comes up from the bottom, navigation controller comes up from the side. Yep. Um, navigation controller comes with a navigation bar automatically. And if you want one for your modal view controller, um, you would have to implement it yourself. Um, yep. Yep. Modal leads to the stack, navigation controller does not. What do you guys think of this one? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Yes, so that's correct. Um, a kind of gave it away, but yeah, modal and no stack, because um, nav navigation controller is where the stack is at. Um, so what is true about delegation? Um, so what do you just guys, what, uh, what do you guys think? Just shout out the answer. Yes, all of the above. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty, pretty not uh, not too hard uh, review questions today. Um, yeah, all all of it's true. Just delegation. Just the main thing to remember about delegation. It's like the way you communicate between view controllers and you use a protocol because um, you want to just have um, organized and kind of explicit way of communication. Uh, okay, so that's about it. I'm gonna pass the mic over to Austin.
All right, guys, so we're going to talk about MVC today. Has anyone ever heard that term? So it stands for model, or sorry, yeah, model view controller. That was right. So it's a design sort of like standard, like how you should model your uh, apps. So it, the reason why it's great is because it promotes separation of concern. Um, it decouples your code, so not everything's in one giant file. Um, it allows for easy reuse, and it's used in a lot of mobile and web applications. So, for example, uh, this is how MVC Julie's uh, laid out. You have your um, controller in the middle, which is sort of like the view controller. Then you'll have your model, which might be like... Um, a user or a student or some type of class usually. And then you have your UI view elements, which might be like a, uh, a cell or some type of component that you will um, define sort of views. Um, so like for an example, um, all these apps sort of use the MVC model. We have our controller, like our model, for example, like this uh, reminders app has a model of a reminder probably. It has a name, a description, a checkbox, and you see it everywhere. It's on Facebook, Instagram. Every app sort of uses this paradigm. Uh, but today, we're going to use uh, this MVC uh, idea to do something with table views. So I would say this is one of the most common components in iOS besides like buttons or labels uh, because this is everywhere. So you might be asking, what is a table view? So for example, on our left, we have the settings, which all of you, if you have an iPhone, you know what this is. Uh, if you see, they're all sort of like separated in little cells, uh, which is, this is all in one table view. Uh, Apple Music, it's a little bit different, but again, you see the cells. You see like, that's a cell. There's information in each cell. Um, and this is not only just in Apple apps. Uh, the left is Instagram. It's an Instagram comments. Uh, the right is YouTube. YouTube comments, like everywhere you see table views. It's honestly one of the most important components, I'd say, uh, when you're learning iOS. Just... You could represent you know, anything. It's like a list, but in a nice way. And today we're gonna go over on how to build one. Does anyone have any questions so far? All right, so let's start by opening up Xcode. Okay, so we're gonna create a new Xcode project. Uh, single view application as always. I'm just going to call it L4 for lecture four. Uh, you guys also don't need to include like these unit tests, UI tests. We see sometimes you guys submit your projects with these, but you don't really need them. We're not doing many tests. Click next. Uh, I'm just going to create a folder for this. Oops. Oh well. And we are at our usual way, uh, let me just make the presentation bigger so you guys can actually see my code. Um, but as always, we're going to delete the storyboard. So we have to delete if it wants to load. Of course, move to trash. And then go to your info list. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. This is so bad. Close out everything else. You guys should basically know how to do this by now, though. Hopefully you're not following along. Uh, all right, so we're going to go to our app delegate. As always, in the did finish launch with options, we're going to add our window equals UI window with the frame um, UI screen dot main dot bounds. All right, let me close up this window. Okay, and then we have to set the root view controller. And this time we're gonna make it a UI navigation controller like we did last time with our root view controller just being our normal view controller that is created with this project. Make sure you initialize it like that. And then, does anyone remember the last thing we have to do? Anyone? Yeah. Yep, perfect. So window dot 
Uh, also, I see sometimes you guys might like write window question mark dot. Like you honestly could just do dot and then it'll like just figure out you need a question mark. So it's pretty cool. Um, all right, so that's good. So that's basically gonna launch our view. So now let's head over to our view controller. And so we're gonna add some stuff. So let's first start by making the view white because I think it does by default black. Simple stuff, uh, let's see. So, yes. So today we're gonna make a sort of like a mimic reminders app, but not as complicated. It's gonna be pretty basic. So uh, from the MVC model or paradigm we were talking about, we need a model. So we're gonna start off by creating a, a new file and it's gonna be our reminder model, which is sort of gonna define what a reminder is. So we're gonna go to be file, new file, just a Swift file. Um, and then click create, then, oh geez, I meant to rename it. Uh, so we just wanna rename it reminder. Um, so this, we have to sort of define our model, like what is our reminders gonna hold? So if you guys remember, we're gonna create a class called reminder. Um, and let's see, so we should probably have a title. We should have a is completed Boolean, you know, is the task completed, is it not? And let's start with that. So remember we have to declare all the types of things we want in our class. So we're gonna start with the title. Um, then we're gonna say is completed, which is gonna be type bool. And then we're gonna have, um, I was also thinking we should sort of maybe make a priority. Um, so some tasks are really, really important and some are not, but I don't know if string or int is the best way to specify priority. So instead, let's make an enum. Beautiful enums. So we'll make an enum called priority and we'll give it three cases. So we'll just say, what, you could have a low priority, medium priority, or high priority. So this is why enums are awesome. So now, our priority, what type should this be then? Yeah, perfect. Basically pros. So now, just like that, we made a custom type called priority. So we're gonna have three things. Title, is completed, and priority. So what is one thing this file is missing, or this class? You guys are already on top of it. So let's create an initializer really, uh, really quickly. So just copying, is completed. Cool. and priority, which is type priority. And then you just do self.title equals title. I really think that Apple or the Xcode team should really just like select the class and then make, make initializer because this is like really annoying. Uh, priority, all right, beautiful. So that's our model and that's, Pretty clear to me. So now we sort of, for the MVC, if you remember the M, the V, the C, we sort of just did our M. This is our model. So once we have this, we're gonna hop back to the view controller and sort of initialize our model. So we'll just wait a second until everyone has this. Does anyone have any questions on this class? Yeah. So I just went to file, new file, and created a Swift file. But what was the subclass you did? Nothing. Uh, I, I, I didn't do a Cocoa oh, touch, I just did Swift. Oh. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, so, yeah, if you want to take a picture really quick. All right, yeah, so we're gonna go back to our view controller now. So, let me get rid of this function. So now we need to, uh, let's see, let us define, let us define some reminders. So ideally we'd have like some fancy UI where you can input a reminder, but because the class is so short, we're just gonna sort of hard code some. So we're gonna say let first reminder equals reminder. And then we'll say feed fish, 
and we'll say is completed is false. And we'll say that this is a pretty low priority. You know, you may want to feed my fish, may not. Um, then we have a second reminder. So we'll just work with two today. And, you know, uh, win at Fortnite. I have one before. Uh, it's not completed. It is, but it's not. And this is a high priority. You need to get those W's. Um, so now we just created two reminders. But again, usually you would have some UI for this. Uh, but for now, we're just going to hard code it. And then we also want to keep track of you know, all reminders in one array. So if we wanted to do a reminders um, array, what type would this be then? Reminders, right? A reminder. So we're going to have an array of reminders. Um, and we just type it like that, and Swift will figure it out, and we'll just set it, we'll start it to empty. There's nothing when we start out at. And now, something you guys haven't done before, we're going to create a new variable called table view. And the type is going to be UI table view. So it's just a, another UI element. UI table view, and this is like really, really popular, and we'll go, we'll go through how to set all this up so your app looks awesome. Um, all right. So now uh, we'll also, in this view, set a title equal to reminders. So you don't need to set this to a variable. This is just comes with the view. It's just uh, it represents the title at the top of your screen. So you don't need to say var or let, just title equals reminders, and it'll just work. Um, all right, so now let's append both of the reminders to the reminders array. Uh, dot append first reminder and reminders dot append second reminder. So now we have our array of two elements. Is everyone clear so far? Doing good? All right, so yes. You want to you try? Have you, did you do it? Yeah, it'll throw a uh, it'll throw a error because it's gonna say that you have to run some stupid thing. Like if I try building this, yes, yeah, see, cannot use instance member until you run the initializer before so yeah yeah yeah. Ideally, that'd be the way to go, which I tried when I made the demo. I didn't work. Um. So unfortunately, we have to do it like that. Um, but now, yes, yeah, so we are here. Any other questions? Good question, by the way, though. Um, we're going to do a table view. So equals UI table view. Pretty straightforward stuff. So this is pretty similar to you know a label, a text view, um, an image, UI image. It's just another UI element. But now we're going to have to set some. So there's some cool properties you can do with table views. Like, you know how when you scroll and it like bounces, like that's like satisfying, but that's a Boolean. So you just do table view dot bounces and equal to true. And you could find pretty bad apps where they don't let you bounce and it's really annoying. So then you're like just going and yeah, always set that. Um, and then we also have to do Table view dot auto translates auto whatever equal to false. Um, all right, so that's that. So now we have our table view, uh, and we just need to add it to the view. So it's like another UI element. There's nothing different about this table view yet. Um, and then we are going to. We have to lay it out. So set up constraints. And I'm going a little fast here because we've sort of seen all this before. I want to get to the new stuff and really uh, work on it so we are good with that for the project. So set up, we have to call set up constraints. So now let's set up our constraints. And then layout constraint. That activate. 
All right, so this is a pretty straightforward uh, layout. So if you remember like the settings or like the music app, like they're always like the full size of the view. So we could just do table view dot top anchor dot constraint equal to view dot safe area layout guide dot top anchor. Um, the leading and trailing are going to be the same sort of. So dot leading dot constraint equal to view dot leading anchor. Um, same with the trailing. And the only thing that's going to be different is the bottom anchor. So how would you guys suggest to lay out this bottom anchor? What do we need to use? What? So ideally, yes, but for table views, I argue against using safe area layout. And here's my argument. If you remember the settings app, it sort of went all the way to the bottom and then was off the screen because there was more rows, if you remember. Um, so if we set our table view to sort of be like in the safe area, and like for the iPhone 10 specifically, like where that there was like extra space and it'll look weird. So we should have our table view go all the way down, if that makes sense. So usually you would use safe area, but this time you would not. So we're just gonna do table view dot bottom anchor dot constraint is equal to view dot bottom anchor. Um, and you'll see this if you try to run it on the 10 and you try to do safe area, you'll see the difference. Uh, but that is that. Um, so next, so if you guys remember, this is something that's like pretty important. So make sure you pay attention. We had our, you saw on each, like the Instagram, YouTube, Apple Music settings, each cell like looked different. So we have to sort of say what the cell should look like. So we need to subclass UI table view cell. And this is pretty important. So we're gonna go to file, new file. Um, and we're gonna do a Cocoa Touch class. Okay, make sure we're doing Cocoa Touch class. And then subclass of UI table view cell. And we are going to create ours titled reminder table view cell. And this is going to be pretty straightforward. So you just make sure it's subclass of UI table view cell. And just save it into your directory. And now we're going to get put in this new file. So now we have a class reminder table view cell, which is of type UI table view cell. Um, so first things first, you're going to notice it looks a little different. We have this await from nib function. So don't worry about it. And we have this set selected. Don't worry about it. We're not going to bother with those things. So this is sort of similar to how we usually do it. So now imagine our cell is sort of like one, you know, one view. And we need to sort of define what elements we want in that cell. So we had a title and we had a priority. So we should create a title label and a you know priority label. Maybe just have two labels. You can have like a checkbox if you want to do like the uh, is completed, but for the sake of this um, tutorial, we won't. So we'll do var reminder label of type UI label. And we'll also do var priority label, UI label. So now we have our two labels, and we need to sort of initialize them and stuff. But now you guys notice there's no like view did load or view will appear or stuff like that where we initialize this. That is because this is not a view controller. It's sort of just like a view. So there's no, it never really has a function where it gets loaded. It's sort of similar to a class where we have an initializer. So we could do override init. And you'll see this init style and reuse identifier. And we'll just use that. And that'll get called when we create it. So we have to call super.init. Um, and then we just pass in the variables. So style, style, and reuse identifier, reuse identifier. And we'll touch on what the reduce, reuse identifier is in a little bit. It's like one of the coolest things in the world, to me at least. Um, 
So now imagine this is just our view did load, right? Instead of view did load, it's just an initializer. So we got to initialize some stuff. So our reminder label equals UI label and our priority label equals UI label. And it's going to yell at you and say, you need this other, oh, where did it go? I want it to come back. Uh, here it goes. So you just want to click this and click like fix. And like, <laughs> this is a really dumb, I don't know what this is, but yeah, yeah, just you need it to override the initializer. Just don't worry about it. I don't know what it is. Um, all right, and so we need to lay out these labels. So again, we have to set the translates blah blah to false. Uh, translates to false. <coughs> all right, so we set that for both our labels. And now I'm also going to change the text color just so it's different. So I'll make the uh, uh, reminder label text color red and the priority label one blue just to spice it up. Um, and now something that's a little different again. So usually we would do view dot add sub view, but if I type view, sort of nothing comes up. We don't have a view. What we do have is a content view. Same thing as a view, really, just content view, that adds a view. And you just add both of these, bada boom. And so when you're inside a custom UI table view cell, uh, don't, you can also, by the way, very bad, do not do this. Just gonna show you for demonstrations. You can just type add sub view and put your view but this will just like screw you over with auto layout and you'll have like the weirdest layout of your cells and you won't know why, what's going wrong. You'll be freaking out at two on Piazza and it's the content view to add sub view. Content view to add sub view. Um, all right, and you guessed it. We, this time, need to set up our own set of constraints again, but we're not going to do it the usual way. So we're going to override a function here that the cell provides called override func update constraints. So we could call this in the view controller and then it'll update the constraints for us once we set our label and set our text. Um, so when you're doing your UI table view cell, you could just override func uh, update constraints, but then the content inside the, um, the function is going to be exactly the same. So the syntax is a little different when you're working with sort of the view, right? If we're thinking of the MVC, this is, it, this is the view. We're defining what the view will look like. It's going to be a cell and stuff like that. So we need to set our constraints. So we'll set the reminder label dot leading anchor dot constraint equal to, you know, view dot, sorry, not view, content view, don't make that mistake, dot leading anchor with an offset of 16, just so it's a little in from the left, we'll just have a label that says our reminder. And then we also need to set the, we want it to be, you know, center on the Y axis. So thankfully there's this nice center Y anchor dot constraint equal to content view dot center y anchor and then lastly we'll set the width so uh, this is the stuff you should all be familiar with so we'll just set the width equal to reminder label dot intrinsic content size dot width all right so that's it for the um, Reminder label, so the priority label is going to be really similar, so we could just, you know, copy our code. Um, 
And we'll duplicate down here and we'll replace the reminder with priority label. So I'll do the first one. So it should be priority label dot leading anchor. Uh, should get rid of that and change, sort of reverse it. We want it to go on the other side of the view. On the right side of the view, we want to have a priority indicator. So um, we'll just sort of reverse everything. So instead of leading, it's going to be, we're going to set the trailing anchor to the right, uh, minus 16, so it goes inward a little bit. Um, the center Y could be fine, and the height just needs to change, or the width just needs to um, change it from reminders to priority. Right, so that's pretty straightforward. So we really only modified this one by changing it from leading to trailing. And, but whenever we, so when we, I'll leave it on here for a second. But when we overrid the um, init, we had to call super.init. So don't forget to call super.update. Um, or you might have like some weird crashes or something. But do the constraints make sense to everyone? Does anyone have any questions? Clear, pretty straightforward. We're making the label on the left side, center on the Y. We're making the priority on the right side, center on the Y. Um, yeah, any questions? Yeah. I'll do that up here for a second. So now, we sort of defined our model, which is the reminder, and we defined our view, which is the reminder table view cell. Uh, the last thing we need to do is sort of glue it all together, and this works with um, view controller, and that's the you know that's the V, and, no, that's the C and MVC controller. Um, yes, let me make sure this is good. All right, so now we're gonna pop back to our view controller. And now, okay, so I'm going to show you type this line of code and then really explain this because um, this makes everything super, super awesome. So we're going to go back to our table view where we initialize the table view stuff. And we're going to write table view dot register. And we're going to pick this one, the cell class, and for reuse identifier, string so this top one not the nib or the a class or whatever we want this one so now we need to register our class with the table view so we just created a reminder table view cell dot self and don't click enter because it'll throw this nonsense at you just click away so and then we're going to give it a reuse identifier and we will say this is just reminder so okay are you guys ready to be blown away on why this you need to do this? So when you have a table view, especially like, you know, like let's take, you know, Facebook or Instagram, like you could scroll forever, right? Like you could go and go and go. So a bad, you know, a bad um, like mobile thing like Android used to do, um, you would scroll and each time a new element was coming, it would create a whole new cell for that one. and then when it was done, it wouldn't do anything with it. It would just like sort of throw it away. And it's expensive to create a cell. So a reuse identifier, when we're scrolling down Instagram and the picture on the top goes out of the view, Apple will, or Swift will reuse that. It'll re it won't create a whole new cell, it'll reuse that cell. And that's what makes it, like when you scroll it's buttery smooth, it's because of reuse identifiers. So reuse identifiers allow us to reuse cells. It's pretty clear. Um, and you might think like, oh, like why do they need to do that? It's pretty dumb. Like it'll just make a new UI table view cell every time. It's like, well, hit your performance. Like it'll be garbage. Your app will be stuttery. So this is something that Android started doing only recently. So it's pretty cool, you know, head of the game. Um, but is that clear to everyone? Like why that's super important? Does anyone have any questions on reuse identifiers? No, no questions? All right, so uh, let's see. So we did that. So you will need to do this. Uh, if I had like multiple table view cells, I'd have to register all of them and give them a separate, you know, reuse identifier. Um, and we'll get to how you actually implement a cell in a second. We also need to come up to our top 
and we need to sort of add to this uh, declaration here. So we see we have a view controller of type UI view controller, but we also are going to want to do UI table view delegates, delegates, pretty familiar, and UI table view, uh, where is it? Data source. Okay, so does anyone remember what a delegate is? And you can tell me what a delegate is. Yes. Yeah, right. So that's like a delegate. It's a protocol. You sort of define like the function you want and you could like pass it back, pass uh, information between two view controllers. So also we have something called a UI table view delegate. And that's sort of similar in a way that when we implement this, when we have our table view and you click on it, like how do you know to handle that click? There would be a delegate function that says that will basically tell us, hey, this cell was clicked, you should do something. So we can easily, we don't have to see like, try to map to see, oh, they clicked it at this pixel, is this our cell or is it this another cell? Uh, the delegate will tell us. And the data source, which is, you need both of these, the data source will be, uh, our app will say, hey, what should go in this cell? And we have to say, oh, we want you know this label and this cell, this information to go with this cell. So it's like the data source. So to use that with our table view, we need to do table view dot data source equals self and table view dot delegate equals self. So really quick, again, the distinction between these two, a data source is sort of asking for what, what information do I need so I can lay out your view properly or your table view versus the delegate is like, hey, something happened to your table view. How do you want to respond? Um, and there is going to be some errors that we're going to need to fix right now. So it's going to say, if you read the error, it says type view controller does not conform to protocol UI table view data source. So that means we need to implement some protocols. Uh, so I'm going to hop down here. And now we could be able to type override uh, funk. Um, if you type start type start uh, start typing number, uh, you'll see this number of rows in section and tells the data source data source to return the number of rows in a given section of a table. So uh, some other terminology with table views is you could separate them into sections. So as you saw, like the settings had like the the section at the top, which was like turn off airplane mode or why. Uh, airplane mode, Wi-Fi, stuff like that, then add like a space and another section. So your table view could have as many sections as you want. Um, you might want to have, you know, a section for uh, reminders that aren't completed and reminders that are completed, uh, stuff like that. So we got to specify the number of rows in section. So we're going to override this function. And now here's a question. What do I return here? What number? Do I return zero, one? Do I return how, how, how would I know how many rows I need? How would I know? And I can't hard code a number because a reminder reminders can change. So is there any way you see of how I could get this number of how many reminders we have? What? Perfect. So we could say return reminders uh, dot count. So this will always you know be up to date. Uh, how, we have two reminders, so currently we return two. Um, and this should stop yelling at me now. Um, and by default, there's only one section in a table view. So if I were to define two sections, I make I got to make sure like if section equals 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 zero, then return something versus if section equals one. But since we're dealing with just one section, we could just have one return statement. But this function will also pass in the um, the section. All right. What does it yell at me for? Uh, this is. Do I need, no. Oh wait, sorry. Uh, I guess you don't need override. I get confused sometimes. My bad. Um. So now we tell it the number of rows, uh, which is sort of one thing done, right? Now we should, uh, if you type 
func height for row at, we could specify the height of each cell. So we'll just click enter here on height for row at, and it auto completes, and then we'll return the default 44. That's the standard view for, um, or the height for a cell. It's what Apple decides. Um, and then we also could have our title for header in section. So with each section, there's a header, and we could put a string. So we might, you know, if you had two sections, you might want to say, hey, this first one is a uh, is completed, and the second one is not completed. But for this one, we'll just have um, uh, reminders, or whatever you want to say, do these, or something. Um, and this will let us know what the section is about. So you let people know, the user, hey, this is what this section is about. Um, all right. So before we go any further, I'm going to create a helper function. So we have this priority, right, that we define as an enum, but I sort of want it to be a string. So if I create a helper function called func uh, priority to text, and it takes in a priority of type priority, and does anyone remember how I specify if a function, say this function wants to return a string, how do I specify that? Yeah, arrow, oops, arrow, and say string. So, does anyone remember also how do I, the fancy syntax, or what's it called, uh, when I want to sort of determine each type of priority and return something different? Yeah, switch. So if we do switch priority, now we could do, if the case is low, I will return one exclamation mark. If the case is medium, I'll return two exclamation marks. And if the case is high, I will return, as you guessed it, four exclamation marks. Um, okay, so this is just a small little helper function so we don't have to have this code in a different function so it's nice and clean. We sort of separate it out. So this priority to text and priority to string, it takes in a priority and returns exclamation marks. Um, so now, you could see that it's still yell yelling at us saying we don't conform, blah, blah, blah. So we need one last function. So we have, so we have the number of cells we need. We have the height of the cells, but we sort of need to say like, give the cells themselves. Um, so you, it's called cell for row at. So this function is asking you, hey, we're gonna give you a row and we want the cell that you want at that row. And you can see it returns a UI table view cell, which is, uh, we subclass that and created a reminder table view cell. So now we need to create our cell. So this is where the cool part comes in. So we do let cell equal table view dot dq re uh yeah dq uh reusable cell with the string that we named up here. So up here we called it reminder cell. So reminder cell as now we need to force cast it. It's pretty dangerous, but it's really the only way to do it. As, so what do we need to cast a cell as? What do we want it to be? Hmm? You guessed it. And you guys are thinking it. Um, we need to cast a cell as our reminder table view cell. Because if you notice, if you click option and uh, click on DQ, it returns a UI table view cell optional. So we need to sort of force cast it and be like, well, we want to do our table view because we specified up here that we're gonna register our table view cell. So now that we have this, we could add the components. So we could do cell dot 
And now you see like this priority label and reminder label showed up, which what we made in the table view cell. It's like, that's awesome. So let's add the reminder label dot text, you know, as usual, equals. So now we need to get the text from the reminders array. So we will do reminders and we need to get the specific index, right? So we can't just say zero or one because we write code forever. So if you notice this function passes an index path. So an index path is made up of two things. It, if we type index path dot, there is a row which tells you what row number we're at and there's also a section, but we don't need to worry about sections since we're having one section. So we'll just ask for the row. So th what this is doing is this gonna this when it wants to create the first cell, um, it'll pass in row zero, and we'll know that corresponds to our reminders index of zero, and then we just need to do dot title, and then we need to do the same for priority, but let's just space it out a little bit because it's gonna be a lot. So we have let priority equals uh, priority equals reminders index path dot row dot priority and then we're gonna say let priority text equals priority to text of the priority and this is gonna return a string as you remember and then we just do cell dot priority label dot text equals priority text And then, um, after we set that stuff, we need sort of need to tell our view, our cell, to lay itself out. So we could do cell dot set needs update constraints, and then this will call the function that we overrode when we said, "Hey, this is how you need to update constraints." So we'll just call that, and then last thing, this function returns a UI table view cell. And since our cell is a subclass of the UI table view cell, we could just return cell. And that should be everything. Now the warning went away because you know we, we made the data source, we told you the cell, we told you the height, we told you the number of rows, we even gave you a title. And now let's build this. And if I did nothing wrong, this is low we should have our table view. It's pretty cool. Does anyone have any questions? Let's see. Okay, please work. So while we're waiting, could some brave soul tell me again the difference between a data source and a delegate? Like the UI table view data source and the UI table view delegate? It's pretty important to know. Anyone? No one? No one wants to answer? Come on. Come on, you guys. Don't do this to me. Don't even call on someone. See what's gonna crash. It's loading, 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 it's loading. Hopefully it's still loading. Yes. How do you like capture the same different ones? How Hey, yeah, we'll go over that in a second. So um look, it worked. This is our table view. 
you can see like all the cells, there's nothing in them, but except our two feed fish and win our Fortnite and our priority was like, this is pretty important versus this is okay. Uh, and we have our header and then we have our title. So like you literally just made a table view. So ideally we'd you know, have a plus button and you would bring up some modal view that would allow you to enter a new reminder and then you have a delegate to pass the data back and you reload the table view. So yeah, that's a cool function to go over. You could also do table view. Say you have a delegate that passes data back. You could do table view dot reload data, which will sort of reload it with the new data and it'll call all those functions again. Before I answer your question really quick, um, so this is all just for the data source. We're sort of telling like table view, this is what we want as our data, but we haven't really touched anything with the delegate. So you might want to do something if the cell was selected. So you can override, uh, not override, but another function called did select row at. So this is a delegate function that will fire when we select the row. So if we say, um, let's, let's say we're going to print out the title of the row we selected. So we could do print reminders of index path dot row, and then we'll also just do table view dot deselect row at index path, and then true. What? Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, dot. This will not print out what we want. So okay. So when you select a row, we're going to get the row and get the title uh, from our reminders array, and then we're going to deselect the row, or it'll just look like it's always selected. It'll be darker, and it just looks bad. Um, and while this is building, to answer your question, so if you want to build uh, like apps to your guys' phones, you have to go to developer.apple.com, register, and I think then you just have to go to Xcode preferences, um, accounts, and you want to add your account here, you want to sign in, and then, oh, let's see, so if we watch the console, let's see if it worked, uh, yeah, so feed fish, and you see like, it deselects it, so now, if we want to maybe push to a new view controller, once they select something, you guys know how to do that, right? It says dot push, navigation control dot push. So you can have like different views, sort of like how the settings does it, where you'll go into different parts of the settings. Um, and that's like everything a table view. So a delegate we use for the did select row at, and the data source is what we use for all this other stuff. Um, so you will need to go to developer.apple.com, make your account, add it to Xcode, and then plug in your phone, select your phone from the list, and then make sure that this signing is set to like your account information that you entered, and then it'll build, and then it'll tell you like it can't run on your phone, but it'll make you go to settings, like a trust that your computer is okay to make changes, like write apps to your phone, and then once you click trust, you'll be able to build your phone. Yeah, it's pretty annoying, but you can look it up too, it's YouTube it or whatever. Um, but like. Honestly, like this is so cool. You guys just made a table view. Uh, it's pretty ugly, but you know, you saw YouTube, Instagram, uh, settings, you could, you could add images in here. It's just another view, basically, just a lot smaller. Uh, we reuse, so if we just scroll, if we had a bunch of stuff and we scrolled up, um, it would take the stuff off the top and put it in the bottom and sort of reuse it. Uh, which I think is like honestly so cool. You'll start noticing these, watch. You open up any app, you're like, that's a table view. Uh, and there's also like another one called the collection view, which we'll get into uh, later. But that's more like if you have Apple Music or Spotify and it has like the, the albums with like the big albums, they don't really look like cells because they're collection, but it's basically like the same thing. Uh, does anyone have any questions uh, about table views? Because they're like pretty important. You see them everywhere. Um, make sure you guys uh, when you start the projects, it's always good to look back at the code. We release all our code we do for the demos. So make sure you look at that for good styling practices. Uh, like for some minor things, I just want to go over really quick. But when you make your classes, don't camel case your classes or your, your, your enums. Uh, make those capitalized. And then when you create your variables, it's good Swifty to do like, you know, title, reminder, not title, reminder, 
camel case is the best case. Um, but yeah, with that, lecture is over. Thank you, and see you guys next week. Finish on time. How do I just get rid of this? Do you mind going for the... Uh, yeah, one second. Let me just...